Today's video is just a really quick update looking at these roller pens and how we weather the pretty intense storm. <laughs> It's that time of year again. Berkeley compost, 18 day compost. So this is some of the bedding from the cows, the straw, and there's some partially decomposing manure and some of the tomato waste and grass forbs, etc. Making compost. So a little update, it's very wet weather today, a lot of rain forecast, so we've come along and put the fence in really tight to the pens, just to keep the birds encouraged to be under the ground and dry, and we've rolled all the pens together, and so today's pens are a lot more watertight, and I think that's a good move, the birds are dry inside. And we're just going to monitor if it's really heavy rain and water starts flooding under then we need to give them some bed and get them up off the ground but right now birds are dry enough and that's fine by me it's it's good we need some rain the gardens need rain it's just always a bit of a cautionary feeling when you've got young birds coming out so pigs are here last time before these trees are cut this winter some beautiful old spruce trees up here and then this land has got to regenerate afterwards and so we're keeping pigs out for some years to allow this to go through amazing seeing all the young birds coming back and I noticed a lot more insect life and bird life last year but up in the tree house up in the patch of wood over there I've got the uh, three birds, three nests in my actual tree house, in the roof and above the door is a little ledge. Pretty amazing to watch. So just for contrast, we've just had a bit of rain today, so that's why we've been paying attention to broilers, but the difference, this is the paddock they'll come into, and you see the regrowth after having pigs in here in the autumn, so it's ready to go again. And so it's a time-based thing, but we don't mind keeping these in here for a little longer because this forest is getting cut and their digging action is going to germinate a lot more tree seeds that are going to have many years to recover once this forest is cut and we'll see a whole flurry of succession of the sort of species we see here and eventually this will all be turned back to silver pasture for cows for wintering for part of their grazing plan etc so here's a few of the older birds and they obviously much more adapted to moving around in these pens so they kept out of the rain really well you see them sitting in the sheltered sections only and that's different with young birds they can get scared by the sound of rain on the roof and it drives them out into the wetter ground but yeah all these birds are doing fantastic and they've been having nice weather all the way through their early stages so it's definitely much easier and, and they've had two percent mortality across the whole batch which is fantastic I would imagine that being higher in the roller pens just because we're getting them out at three weeks in very challenging conditions. But it went as well as it could go, I think, so pretty successful. So we're about halfway through our farm scale permaculture course. It's a lot of study. We've been doing really intensive uh, sessions on, you know, everything to do with forest ecology, water systems in landscape, key line design. Today we spent the whole day looking at market gardening, how we plan market gardens from tools to bed size to all the different factors that are involved in the planning through to all the spreadsheets and the detailed planning and quite a lot of information today. So we're having a restful evening tomorrow. We're going to have a barbecue at the lake when the weather seems to be coming back to the sun again. We've had a, a couple of rainy days, but we had a really intense storm last night with the boilers and I had a lot of concern. I was up here, all the breaks I had during the day, just observing the birds because they're so young and they're much more exposed than the Salatin style pens on the ground and so I had to make some adjustments because of a super heavy downpour we had. So here you can see where we've actually put a bit of sawdust, I'm going to come and clean this up and we knew it was going to be heavy rain in the evening so what I came up and did differently from today 
is I rolled all the pens together so that the roofs were all touching and I brought the net in right to the edge. You see the roof overhangs slightly and so I brought the fence in to make sure they have to sit inside under the dry. I made the decision yesterday not to move the birds because the ground's quite high and the grass is wet in the mornings from dew. And so coming up here to move them, I made a decision based on the weather forecast not to move them because they were already sat on dry ground. The birds are so young at this time, they're not leaving so much manure. And I'm super glad I made that decision because the birds were really dry. And when the rain came, it was all in within like an hour, but we were listening to a movie in the yurt and we had the the sound on full volume and you couldn't even hear so we gave up watching the movie we were getting into animals and grazing we were watching great judy one of his talks it's really an amazing talk but we gave that one up and aborted it and i came straight up here with Niels, and we just made sure the birds were fine and then added some bedding because there were a few surface flows coming down here you can see where there's a bit of a depression and a little hole here it was such a strong rain and the ground is so very dry from having no rain really for six weeks that there was just sheet runoff under here and I was very concerned because these birds are super young we get them out at three weeks which is younger than most people or you know some people are getting them out in three weeks in fair conditions no problem the, the boilers that came out first of all have had super ideal conditions they came out of the brooder to 28 degrees and it was no rain and just nice weather since and they're growing amazingly we've lost two percent of those birds and mostly in the brooder which you would expect but these birds i would imagine are going to have a higher mortality i can report back on that as we see but they're much more exposed and there's a bigger uh, weight distribution in this group in general just coming out the brooder there's a lot more small birds some of them are you know double the size of others and that's often the case with boilers but not at this time like often the weight differentiation comes later when the males obviously are growing quicker and it was very interesting i'm glad we acted in the way we did because the birds were bone dry they were totally comfortable and fine and i think the decisions and action we took were, were needed and then today we knew we were going to get rain again it's a bit gloomy and gray but it's just drizzle and so I immediately wanted to give them a bit more space. And I've come up here several times today and they're all dry and they're doing great. So I'm, I'm happy with the way we've managed them. And it's a observational intensive thing. You still need to go check on the Salaton style pens anyway in, in heavy storm events. If there's groundwater flowing, the birds have got nowhere dry to sit. You've got to get them up off the ground. And that's only more critical the smaller the birds are. If they're older birds, they're obviously more resilient. But either way, you really want to make sure the birds have got somewhere dry to sleep. And it, it really does a good job with these roofs. And sometimes with the Salatin pens, the, the water can push the sort of plastic roofing down. You'll get water coming inside. Not a huge amount, but uh, certainly dripping but this has worked great. We've had the fence on at full power and the birds learned very quickly to stay away from that. And today I've just given them a bit more space. Now, we're using a 50 and a 25 meter net here and the 50 meter net's going up the hill. You can see the end of it there. And that's to allow us to give them a much bigger run. As the birds get bigger, now they're so young, we don't want to have the fence too far away from the edges of the pen because we don't want predator birds coming in. And so we can give them more space by keeping the pens a bit apart. Like a big bird of prey is not going to want to land inside that. And so I'm happy on the predator front. I'm not too concerned at all. And things like foxes won't come through this net. But it's birds of prey that would be our biggest concern. But seeing the birds now, they're very evenly distributed along this different pens which in the morning they they showed a marked difference so our basic morning routine is set up the next day's fence so we use a 50 and a 25 meter net so that we've always got an opening adjoining the next pen and then we just take the brakes off we just have a bolt that goes through each wheel just to lock each wheel we undo them and we start moving forward but even today this morning on the second move they're already running along with their pen and give it three or four more days and they will come running along knowing they're going to fresh ground. So it's a lot of birds in a small space. There's nearly a thousand birds in these 
enclosure so it's a lot of birds to get moving along when they're really young and um, we know it's going to take you know a few days until they start really coming automatically and then once that happens it'll be a case of opening the pen to the next day's pen feeding down the middle and they will come running to the feed and we'll just be able to then pull the pens over the top of them without the fear of squashing them because they'll be down the center line right now it's a bit, little bit different we're pulling each pen and trying to encourage the birds under that pen to come forward but the ones at the back have quite a long distance to travel so it takes a little bit of time and what you find ending up happening is there's a majority of birds in the last pen that's moved congregating over there so you've just got to watch that and, and you can encourage them along but we haven't needed to do that they're spread out on their own anyway but you see it's drizzling now and they're pretty much all under shelter from their own choice there's a few that range out but they look really dry and good so I'm very happy and they're really enjoying grazing and finding insects this morning we were just watching them running around with huge beetles and earthworms and fighting over slugs and yeah, it's a pleasure to see. So the, the main reason we're, we're doing this model is because it's a lot more like little details to consider in the beginning, the first few days, getting them out, getting them used to fence and having a bit more vulnerability with the shelters. I've talked before, you could easily add side screens and drop down things for weatherproofing, but we just haven't felt it's necessary with the weather we've got. We did have to make that big adjustment yesterday by putting the sawdust down and just bringing the nets in, but that's no big deal. It doesn't take very long, and I like being, you know, very engaged with the processes to make sure the birds are totally fine. But this model will become much quicker. When the birds are used to running forward, you'll be able to tie all these pens together and move them in one go. They're very easy to move. And you'll be able to move, you know, the equivalent of 10 Salaton pens in one go very quickly whilst giving the birds 25-30% more space. And that, that will transfer to a lot more forage, a lot more insects because they'll just have a lot more ground they can go over. And so I like it. I, I'm still, you know, I want to see this whole batch through because it's going to be hard to compare to earlier batches just because we know the weather has been so very different with this batch coming out compared to the first batch which came out in 28 30 degrees for the first four weeks of it so you know it's it's hard unless you run a side by side trial but i'm very happy with the progress and i think it's yeah i'm glad we've done it like this and i'm glad we've paid such close attention even super busy days when we're running our trainings i'm still able to get up here six or more times a day and really have a look what's going on observation is key and that's the 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 complexing bit of all these enterprises we run they're all observational based you can't automate them or you you lose details that inform the management and so you need to be right in the heart of it working intimately it's all about intimate management and based on observation i've been really going through with the participants on the training here all the things i'm thinking about and looking at and I'm running a training with them, but I'm, you know, my mind is on all these things all the time because it's, it's important for the welfare and performance of, of the operations we're running. 1,100 eggs a day, it's, it's a lot of eggs, and we're actually considering going for ecological certification for uh, organic standards because the, one of the big hotel chain spas that's near us that's a very good customer of ours for microgreens and vegetables throughout the winter as well as uh, turkey and chicken and they buy a lot of eggs from us so they they're part of a bigger chain that's got a requirement to buy organics certified eggs and we've never been certified and never wanted to really go down that route and their, their big boss has been talking with the CEO who we've always interacted with and their chain has this policy that they need to adhere to and they've always just been taking our eggs because we have uh, you know we only feed organic feed and so they've been like accepting that but due to the company's like review for their whole company that's operating all over Sweden they've they've brought that issue up and so the CEO that we work with has, has asked if we can just get certified and, and we looked into it and I think it's, it's quite easy for us actually. So we signed the forms today and sent that off and it might be that we become ecologically certified, which is not something I ever thought about or pursued in any way. But 
I think it would bring some benefits, so why not? And I don't know if we'll get that, but we will we'll find out and I'll let you know how that goes in the coming days. So Ragnar's second birthday today, we had a little bit of surprise cakes and gifts for him and yeah, two years flown by quickly. So Ragnar was born, beautiful home birth upstairs during the middle of our internship program actually and Johanna did an amazing job. We had amazing support from our interns who had this whole action plan of when she would go into labour to heat up the bathtubs that we use for bucket showers and bring all this hot water. We had a water berth up in our bedroom in the farmhouse. And so we had a midwife who, like here, midwives are quite far spread apart. There aren't many private midwives. Everyone goes to hospital typically. But we wanted a home birth. And so we brought up a private midwife who we had been seeing. She was about four hours drive away. So we called her up when Johanna felt the signs and started filling up this birthing pool that we had here. And yeah, it was an amazing labor and process and and Johanna gave birth in the early hours and all of the interns did an amazing job cleaning up and just making a you know such a nice reception for when she came back from checks at hospital and stuff and it yeah it was really a magical experience and two years flies by you know it's it's amazing how time flies and yeah interesting to reflect on that today so I'm signing out and going to spend some time with my son and think about that and yeah looking forward to just finishing this training with some really interesting projects and people and their different experiences. I'm not going to be making videos much because we've got some super intense days coming up now as we go into the last half of the course but then we'll be back to regrouping on the farm and really working out the action plan with little trainings peppered in between in the next couple of months, our pasture poultry training, then our workshops with Curtis Stone, the urban farmer. Really excited for that and all the people coming for that. It's going to be a really busy course and really excited to, to meet all of those of you who are coming for that. And then a bit of a quieter period at the farm. And I'll be making more regular videos and keeping updated on what's going on, etc. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your views and comments. And you can find out a lot more in our book, Making Small Farms Work. I'll be sending a whole load of copies that are backtracked from the last week and a half. And I'll be getting them out sometime this week, hopefully. So thanks so much for watching. And you can find out more information in the links below. We'll see you in the next video.